So having talked about pulp making, we need, need, now need to know uh, about how paper is made. And paper is basically uh, the process whereby you get a pulp, which is a suspension of fibres in water. Uh, and you put that suspension onto some sort of wire screen of some description, like a sieve, uh, and then you drain the water away from that, uh, you press it, and then you remove the paper from that screen, and then you heat it to dry it. And that is the paper making process. You can do that at home as long as you've got a suspension pulp, and you have a screen, and you've got an iron, basically, and some blotting paper. It's as simple as that. In industry, the process is a little bit more complicated than that, but not much more complicated. Uh, we have a suspension of pulp, which is put in something called a head box, which is constantly topped up from a, a header tank, which has this slurry, the suspension of pulp in it. And some paper making machines use something called a fourdrinier. Machine, which is a continuous wire screen that rotates at high speed and onto that you squirt the pulp and then you have vacuum boxes which are distributed underneath that, that wire uh, and they pull the water out from the pulp that's suspended on this screen and then you have a take-up wheel at the end and then the paper is taken off and goes through other stages of the paper making machine. Uh, that works fine but it has a number of disadvantages. Uh, you're limited by how fast you can take the water out of that machine and that is limited by these vacuum boxes because even if you had a perfect vacuum which you're not going to have but even if you did you have no more than one atmosphere of pressure applied to the top of that screen at any one time and also of course that atmosphere of pressure will depend very much upon what the weather's doing on that day so you might have to run your paper making machine slower if you have a low pressure over your factory compared with if you've got nice weather because you've got higher pressure so that pressure differential will actually change depending on the weather conditions so that's not ideal if you're trying to run a paper making machine. Secondly, if you look at the paper that comes off that machine, because you're pulling water through, you will have two definite sides to that paper and that's instantly recognisable if you put a drop of ink on that part of the paper. It will pretty much sit where it is, but if you put a drop of ink on this side, it will be wicked in because of this more um, uh, open structure because of these fibres sticking through here where the, the holes in the, in the wire screen were. So you have what's called a wire side to that paper, which is quite obvious. And the older types of newspaper, it was very obvious which side was the wire side because the print quality was different. And that's not ideal if you're trying to sell newspapers. You don't want every other page of your of your newspaper to have slightly fuzzy writing. So because of that, the industry introduced a new type of machine which was called a twin wire former. And the twin wire former is essentially the same as a Ferdrinier. We have two of these rotating wire screens and we apply a pulp slurry here which is now squeezed between the two wires of the twin wire former so we have little rollers which we apply pressure to and because we're applying pressure we can apply more than one atmosphere so this is a much more effective way of dewatering um, the paper web um, this is a horizontal twin wire former, which would be much easier to fit into a paper mill that used to have a Ferdrinier, so if you wanted to retrofit, it would be much easier to put a horizontal twin wire former in. You still get a little bit of this effect of the wire side versus the smooth side of the paper because you still have the effect of gravity 
which is pulling water out that side. So there is a slight difference between one side and the other of the paper. Not as bad as with a Ferdrinier where you're physically pulling the water through. So to get around that problem, um, more modern paper mills have introduced the use of these vertical twin wire formers where the pulp slurry is, can either be applied from the top and the paper is taken out of the bottom or you can squirt the um, pulp in from the bottom and it's taken out from the top. I expect there's advantages and disadvantages to doing it each way. I'm not sure what they are. The issue here with a vertiformer is that you need the height in the building to install it in the first place. So if you've built a paper mill and it was based around a Ferdrinier machine, then you won't be able to have a vertical twin wire former installed. So this has to be designed um, at the beginning. The building has to be designed at the outset unless you've happened to have room for it. But, um, so it's more common to see a horizontal twin wire former, particularly if there's been retrofit uh, for an old Ferdrinier machine.